For your Eastern and Riverine delicacies, follow at TasteBudsNG on Instagram and at TasteBudsNG on YouTube. Hi guys, I'm Daddy Freeze, convener of the Free the Sheeple movement and leader of the Free Nation in Christ. I greet you and I bring glad tidings. During the day, I'm a humble staff of Cool FM and Cool FM brought me from where I was a copper when I joined in 2001 to the leader of a nation where I am today. Thank you very much, Cool FM. And to celebrate Cool FM this October, as Cool FM turns 21, we are going to Oman, Kenya and Dubai. Yes, and you could be a part of this. All you need to do is call this number, 0808-262-2410. 0808-262-2410. You can pay in installments, like Nigeria Ma will say, instrumentally. Yes, come and hang out with me in Dubai, Oman, and Kenya. You need to be there. It's going to be an absolute blast. And you get the opportunity to sit down with me and argue with me. It's worth it. Hi guys, I'm Daddy Freeze, convener of the Free the Sheeple movement and leader of the Free Nation in Christ. I greet you and I bring glad tidings. Um, this is a scripture teaching and it is called Saved from God. So um, I'm going to quickly go into the scriptures. Earlier on, we had um, a bit of a gist in session. Uh, and it was a lot of fun, but, you know, we also have to be serious to understand and to teach um, our doctrine, which is the free nation doctrine, which is the true doctrine of Christ. So please, guys, let's be serious. Grab your scriptures um, if you are with me on this one. So... Um, Hi guys, I'm Daddy Freeze, convener of the Free the Sheeple movement and leader of the Free Nation in Christ. I greet you and I bring glad tidings. Um, I'm going to start this with a prayer. Heavenly Father, I come before you to thank you for what you've done in our lives. I thank you, I bless you, I praise you. I worship you for the wisdom upon this generation. I thank you for the freedom that this new beautiful covenant you have given unto us brings. I bless you and I praise you, Father, not just now, but for all eternity. Father, please continue this wisdom, pouring out this wisdom upon us and let us understand how powerful we are in you and let us have a taste of the age to come. In Yahushua's name I pray. Amen. Amen. So how are you guys doing? Today I'm taking a reading from the book of Exodus. So if you've got the scriptures, please go with me to the book of Exodus. I did say I was coming back, so this one that I'm having very few people watching, they will now say that it freeze, I didn't get notification. Well, I warned you, I told you. All right, go with me to the book of Exodus chapter four and 24. Now, we're, going, we're reading 24 and 25, but to build this particular passage, I'm going to read from 18. So Moses went back home to Jethro, his father-in-law. Please, let me return to my relatives in Egypt, Moses said. I don't even know if they're still alive. Go in peace, Jethro said. But before Moses left Midian, the Lord said to him, return to Egypt for all those who wanted to kill you have died. So Moses took his wife and sons and put them on a donkey and headed back to the land of Egypt. In his hand, he carried the staff of God. As the Lord told Moses, when you arrive back in Egypt, go to Pharaoh and perform all the miracles I have empowered you to do. But I will harden his heart so he will refuse to let the people go. Then you will tell him, this is what the Lord says, Israel is my firstborn son. I command you, let my people go so he can worship me. But you have refused. Now I will kill your firstborn son. On the way to Egypt, at a place where Moses and his family had stopped for the night, the Lord confronted Moses and was about to kill him. 
But Moses' wife Zipporah took a flint knife and circumcised her son. She touched his feet with the foreskin and said, Now you are a bridegroom of blood to me. Then she said, A bridegroom of blood, referring to the circumcision. After that, the Lord left him alone. This old covenant is very hard. Though. The same Lord that sent Moses to meet Pharaoh was the same Lord that said he was going to harden Pharaoh's heart, was the same Lord that wanted to kill Moses along the way. Who knows what Moses did? And the Lord was about to kill him. And then to stop that, Zipporah had to quickly circumcise her son and use the foreskin to touch Moses' leg. And then you guys want to go back to the book of Exodus that says, just hold on, let me read something else from the book of Exodus for you. Something you love. I want to open the book of Exodus for you. Go with me to the book of Exodus, chapter 22. And I want to read 18 for you, but this I want to read from King James. Because King James is, is part of the problem. And this is, one, this is the verse that they quote. Suffer not a witch to live. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. New International Version says, Do not allow a sorceress to live. New Living Translation says, You must not allow a sorceress to live. So it's comfortable for you to quote the book of Exodus chapter 22, forgetting that in Exodus 4, God sent Moses on a message, complicated the message, and then wanted to kill Moses, and then was saved by Moses' wife. I'm not saying that God is wrong. Don't get me, don't get it twisted. What I'm simply saying is our, we were very weak in him. So it was very quick for him to administer the death penalty. And this is not just in the book of Exodus alone. I read to you, let me read it to you. I don't have too much time, but I'll try to work. Let's read this together. From the book of Numbers, chapter 15 and 32. One day, the people of Israel were in the wilderness. They discovered a man gathering sticks. On the Sabbath day, the people who found him doing this took him before Moses, Aaron, and the rest of the community. They held him in custody because they did not know what to do with him. Then the Lord said to Moses, the man must be put to death. The whole community must stone him outside the camp. So the whole community took, took the man outside the camp and stoned him to death, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. For picking firewood now now imagine for picking firewood you're stoned now imagine what happens to you when you do something that is even graver let me read more for you from the old covenant so you guys understand how tough this covenant is a lot of you are not getting it you see Christ did not die to save you from the devil. He died to save you from God. Because every little sin in the old covenant carried a very severe penalty. I'll read. I'll, 
I'll read more of this for you. Go with me to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, and um, I'm reading, uh, tell you exactly where I'll be reading from, I think about 15, 13, Deuteronomy 22, 13. Suppose a man marries a woman, but after sleeping with her, he turns against her and publicly accuses her of shameful conduct, saying, when I married this woman, I discovered she was not a virgin. Then the woman's father and mother must bring the proof of her virginity to the elders as they hold count at the town gate. So those days, it's not that I'm a virgin. You actually have to have proof of virginity. Read it. Read it yourselves. Don't, don't listen to me. Read these scriptures yourselves. Then his father must say to them, I gave my daughter to this man to be his wife. And now he has turned against her. He has accused her of shameful conduct, saying, I discovered that your daughter was not a virgin. But here is proof of my daughter's virginity. They must spread her bed sheet before the elders. The elders must then take the man and punish him. They must also find him 100 pieces of silver, which he must pay to the woman's father because he publicly accused the virgin of Israel of shameful conduct. The woman will then remain the, the man's wife and he may never divorce her. But suppose the man's accusations are true and he can show that she was not a virgin meaning he's got to prove that she was not a virgin. Oh, wow, how easy or how hard that could have been. The woman must be taken to the door of her father's home, and there the men of the town must stone her to death, for she has committed a disgraceful crime in Israel by being promiscuous while living in her parents' home. In this way, you will purge the evil from among you. Somebody say, where am I reading from? Deuteronomy 22, I read from 13 to through 21. Now, this is the old law. So God's instruction is a woman who's promiscuous, somebody practicing oloshoism, somebody hoeing up and down, the punishment was death. Same as the punishment for gathering sticks. Same as the punishment for Moses, for whatever it is he did. I'll read more for you. So, let, let's go somewhere else right now. So go to the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 6. Second Samuel, chapter 6. Are you there, Amarachi? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm reading from 6. 2 Samuel 6, 6. Then David again gathered all the elite troops in Israel. Oh, sorry, I'm reading that's one. When they arrived at the threshing floor of Nacon, the oxen stumbled, and Uzzah reached out his hand and steadied the ark of God. So the oxen carrying the ark of God, the oxen stumbled, and the ark of God was about to fall, or so it appeared to Uzzah, and Uzzah steadied it. God struck him dead because of this. So Uzzah died right there beside the ark of God. David was angry because of the Lord's anger had burst out against Uzzah. He named the place Pere Uzzah, which means to burst out against Uzzah. And it is called that till today. And if you go to 16, well, as the Lord, the ark of the Lord entered the city of David, 
Michael, the daughter of Saul, looked down from her window and she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. She was filled with contempt for him. They brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place beside the special tent David had prepared for it. And David sacrificed burnt offerings and peace offerings to the Lord. Because they brought the ark, they've got to sacrifice burnt and peace offerings. When he finished his sacrifices, David blessed the people in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies. Then he gave to every Israel man and woman in the crowd a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, a cake of raisins. Then all the people returned to their homes. When David returned to bless his own family, Michal, or Michael, the daughter of Saul, came to meet him. She said in disgust, how distinguished the king of Israel looked today, shamelessly exposing himself to the servant girls like any vulgar person might do. Then David retorted to Michal, I dance before the Lord who chose me above your father and all his family. He appointed me as the leader of Israel, the people of the Lord, so I celebrate before the Lord. Yes, I'm willing to look even more foolish than this, even to be humiliated by my own eyes. But those servant girls you mentioned will indeed think I'm distinguished. So Michal, the daughter of David, remained childless throughout her life as a punishment for saying the king was dancing naked questioning what the servant of God did. Now, I'll show you what a woman questioning the Son of God got in the New Covenant. So, let's go to the New Testament now. Luke chapter 10. And I'm reading from uh, about 38, thereabout. As Yahushua and the disciples returned, uh, continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Yahushua and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you? Accusation, right? Amarachi. Accusation. Doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, Dear Martha, you are worried and upset over these little details. There's only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it and it will not be taken away from her. Now the scriptures do not say Martha was struck childless. The scriptures do not say Martha was struck dead. The scriptures do not say Martha had to be stoned. The scriptures do not say Martha had to be shut up. The scripture says, my dear Martha, Christ still corrected her with what? With what? I'm looking for a word. Corrected her with? Corrected her with? Guys, I need your input on this. I'm rounding off now. With what? Not peace. I'm looking for a word. He corrected her. David Pius, thank you for that. He corrected her with love. So the new covenant is a covenant of? Love. The old covenant is a covenant of? Of? The old covenant is a covenant of? Sin and death. The covenant of blood. Now, so that there will no longer be bloodshed, there was one final for all time bloodshed on the cross. So when somebody next time tells you, when somebody now next time tells you that Christ died on the cross to set you free from the devil, 
No. He died to set you free from the law of sin and death. And each time you sinned under the law of sin and death, what you did is you provoked the wrath of God upon your life and the consequence was death. Hebrews chapter 9 and 1. The first covenant between God and Israel had regulations for worship and a place to worship here on earth. There were two rooms in that tabernacle. In the first room was a lampstead, a table, a sacred, sacred loaves of bread. The room was called the holy place. And there was a curtain and behind that curtain was the second room called the most holy place. In that room were gold incense altar, a wooden chest called the Ark of the Covenant, the same Ark that Uzzah died because of. A gold jar containing manna, Aaron's staff that has sprouted leaves, and the stone tablet of the covenant. Above the Ark were the cherubim of divine glory whose wings stretched out over the Ark's cover. The place of atonement, but we cannot explain this in detail now. When these things were all in place, the priests regularly entered the first room as they performed their religious duties. But only the high priest ever entered the most holy place and only once a year. He always offered blood for his own sins and for the sins of the, of the people had committed in ignorance. But these by these regulations, the Holy Spirit revealed that the entrance to the most holy place was not freely open as long as the tabernacle and the system it represented were still in use. Then you jump to 11, Hebrews 9, 11. So Christ has now become the high priest over all the good things that have come. He has entered that greater, more perfect tabernacle in heaven, which was not made by human hands and is not part of this created world. With his own blood and not the blood of goats and calves, he entered the most holy place once for all time and secured our redemptions forever. Twenty four Hebrews nine twenty four for Christ did not enter into a holy place made with human hands, which was only a copy of the true one in heaven. He entered into heaven itself to appear now before God on our behalf and did not enter heaven to offer himself again and again like the high priest here on earth who entered the most holy place year after year with the blood of an animal. If that had been necessary, Christ would not have had to die again. Christ would not have had to die again and again ever since the world began. But now, once for all time, he has appeared at the edge of the age to remove sin by his own death as a sacrifice. And I end with this scripture, Matthew 27 and 50. Matthew 27, 50. Then Christ shouted out again and he released his spirit. 51. At that moment, the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple, that same curtain covering the ark that Uzzah died for, split from top to bottom. The old covenant expired on the cross. Read Galatians chapter 2. Read Colossians chapter 2. They'll give you further Hebrews chapter 7. They'll give you further instruction on this. So for those of you saying, suffer not a witch to live, you really don't want to bring the wrath of God back upon you and your people. Father, I thank you for the ultimate sacrifice of your son. A sacrifice superior to any other sacrifice under any other covenant. Father, let me reap the benefits of this covenant. 
In Yahushua's mighty name I pray. Amen. For your Eastern and Riverine delicacies, follow at Tastebuds NG on Instagram and at Tastebuds NG on YouTube. Hi guys, I'm Daddy Freeze, convener of the Free the Sheeple Movement and leader of the Free Nation in Christ. I greet you and I bring glad tidings. During the day, I'm a humble staff of Cool FM and Cool FM brought me from where I was a copper when I joined in 2001 to the leader of a nation where I am today. Thank you very much, Cool FM. And to celebrate Cool FM this October, as Cool FM turns 21, we are going to Oman, Kenya and Dubai. Yes, and you could be a part of this. All you need to do is call this number, 0808-262-2410. 0808-262-2410. You can pay in installments, like Nigeria Ma will say, instrumentally. Yes, come and hang out with me in Dubai, Oman, and Kenya. You need to be there. It's going to be an absolute blast. And you get the opportunity to sit down with me and argue with me. It's worth it.